Donnie, the, uh, if you were to take a look at the, you know, you've been in this a long time, you've, what would you say are the most successful two or three brands? I mean, Nike's got to be right up at the top, you know, and it still stays strong, right? What, what are be, some of the uh, other ones? I begrudgingly say Donald Trump. Uh, you know, you can love him or hate him. He has understood branding, has understood marketing. Uh, he is kind of, you know, his authenticity is probably more than anything what got him elected. Um, he is a brand that emotionally, that's why now it's whole, it's beyond Trump now, it's Trumpism. And because it's a set of values, it's an attitude, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to let the man tell me what to do, and I'm going to protect this country, and I'm going to keep it right, and I'm going to keep it right, and I'm going to keep us entrenched where we were, you know, 50 years ago, and all the stuff that goes with that. And he's he initially was brilliant in making mass clicks. You know, he was the one who sold what being a rich guy was to the masses. And the insane upside down quality about him is that he ended up selling this incredible populism where he's been a much more populist as the man in the moonies, you know, but somehow because of the way he spoke and the way he conducted himself, the average guy said, ah, he, he gets me. He's like me. We could give a fuck about the average guy. I was always impressed, especially with Donald Trump when he first ran in 2016. Donald Trump was a a used in rap lyrics as as that just meant wealth. It mean meant success. Like at the, the yes. this the image of Donald Trump in and of itself was boiled down to the point that musicians would use him as a quick reference point to success, which to me almost felt like an impossibility to overcome when culturally you are emblematic of of success. And I I do wonder when you fast forward to other other characters in the the movement now who perhaps are going to take over the DeSantis's and what have you. And I think like they're obviously borrowing elements from the MAGA branding. But the one thing they don't have is sort of this this cultural identity of success that has been with us for for decades. And I wonder if you remove that, if you remove Trump from the equation, how much is the MAGA brand reliant on the uh, success story of the American dream that Donald Trump uh, inadvertently or um, you know purposefully built up around himself and we lived with for decades? I think that's not a big, important part of the brand right now. You know, if anything, the irony of Donald Trump has been a failure in so many instances. But what's scary about some of the other characters now, they are more potent because they come in more accessible clothing. You know, Donald Trump now is easy for a lot of people to dismiss because it's crazy and this and he's lying and this. Yet the DeSantis of the world who, who stand for some of the same heinous type, fascist type leanings are packaged better. And you can't look at the guy and go, look at your crazy uncle and foam at the mouth in the corner. They present themselves as more presentable and more digestible and more not so crazy, where in fact the value systems are the same. So the brand is actually packaged better for a DeSantis or even a John Paul or some of these other fucking crazies today because they don't come with the with the crazy trimmings, the the apparent crazy trimmings that, that Trump comes with. They're more, they're more um softly packaged, for lack of a better word. Well, how about those on the left, Donnie? You want to talk about any of those? And I really do want to talk about the Republican brand and the Democrat brand, but, you know, what about what's your view of some of these folks on, on the hard left? Well, there, I just, as you know, by the way, anybody that gets up there and says, you know, defund the police, you're just, to me, disqualified in this. It, 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 it's just that, you know, the difference right now between the two parties is the party, the Republican Party seems to be more co-opted by that extremism, where the extremism exists on the left, but it doesn't seem to be where the, the gestalt of the party is right now. Yes, you have the AOCs and you, you have that, you know, the, the group of them, but it doesn't seem to be getting traction within the party itself, whereas the right wing of the Republican Party has really taken over and become the mainstream part of the party. So I mean, just by, I'm, a, I'm a Democrat and I'm a moderate, and I don't know a Democrat in my travels that says, yeah, AOC, that's what it's about. Now, 20 years from now, we may be saying they're very different too, because you talk to people under the age of 34 and they think socialism is good work. Uh, and I'll just use that as just an example. So AOC is still, I think, a generation away from being a mainstream part of the party, but it's the extreme on both sides are equally as dangerous. So if you were if you were going to try to go and fix the Republican brand, first of all, what do you think the Republican brand is in we're going to put you in charge of fixing it. What would you do? The Republican brand right now is a, is a, is a party of grievance. They don't stand for any policy. 
They stand for uh, let's I, I believe such a huge essence of it is let's keep the country white and let's keep the power, uh, you know, amongst less than more. And let's be less inclusive versus more inclusive. And let's let's stay where we were 20, 30, 40 years ago, as opposed to become more global and more inclusive and more diverse. And it's a pure party of grievance and reaction areas. Uh, the irony is, and you know this, John, and you, you ran successfully for years on this, is that this country lives just right of center. So if right now in the next election, I actually hope the Republicans run Trump because I think that's the only chance the Democrats can hold on. I think right now, if they ran DeSantis or they ran anybody, they would win in a landslide for all the obvious reasons of what's going on in this country. And now, obviously, we're still two and a half years away, but... You know, this economy looks like we're here for a while. And, and unfortunately, if you say the, per, the average person, well, you can either vote for making sure our democracy is okay, okay or making sure a loaf of bread is cheaper, they tend to go with what's in front of them. So the very things that the Democrats are, what, what this committee is all about, what everything is all about, where we are on the precipice of our democracy, I don't know, as tragic and as frightening as it seems, if the average voter if that is the motivator for them, it should be because we don't have that. We don't have anything. 